Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Kidlot404 and I'm going to start, let's say, a new series on this channel. I'm going to try to be a Nintendo pundit. What that means is that I'm like an analyst, your favorite analyst, commentator, you know, news anchor, pundit, you know, these people that talk about current events about the president or current events about sports and things like that would happen in the last game. I want to do stuff like that. You know, the topic is going to be Nintendo, of course, and I'm going to be a Nintendo pundit commentating on Nintendo, their plans, you know, what they're doing, what I want to see from them and so on and so forth. I've had thoughts like these for the last several years. It's just that I've kind of been absent on my YouTube channel. Um, and now, of course, with me wanting to revive my YouTube channel and having all these ideas still, and definitely want to make sure that the next 10 years on this YouTube channel is a lot better uh, than the last 10 years on this channel. You know, I want to start in a fresh, great way by uh, having this series on my YouTube channel talking about Nintendo once again. It's good to be back, guys. So. Um, I'm glad that uh, I'm in the position that I'm able to do this. So the topic that I want to talk about today, I'm sure everybody is going to agree. There's been a lot of talk about this already, uh, but I feel very strongly about this is that I feel like the Nintendo Switch definitely needs, deserves even a pro version of the console. Let me first say that the Nintendo Switch is one of my most favorite consoles ever from Nintendo. It's just an awesome console, okay? Like, the accessibility is awesome. I can take it on the go with me. Um, it's not like I have to set up a bunch of stuff, you know, like a lot of my older consoles. I, sometimes I kind of want to play a game, but I choose not to play the game because it's such a hassle to set up old consoles like GameCube and X64. I have to dig into my closet. It's very messy. Try to find all the cables and wires and power adapters and controllers and all that just to play an old game for like, you know, I just want to remember what that game was like. Um, for like five minutes or something and then I'm kind of bored with it and then I want I have to put it all away with the Nintendo switch It's so awesome because it's like a handheld console by nature So, you know ten years later if I want to play Super Mario Odyssey again I could just pull that puppy out and you know the, with the joy cons already connected I could start playing that game immediately. That's why I love it. It's so accessible It's also part of the reason why I'm I'm deciding to purchase a lot of games like retro games even like SM64 right the uh, 3d all-stars um, collection just because I rather have it on there because I know when I go back to it it's going to be easy to get to it's very accessible um, and it's just a great console right all in all so okay enough with that right I, I feel like because it's such an awesome console that it needs a pro version I also feel like a lot of games are struggling to maintain 30 frames per second or a decent frame rate in some of these games. Fortnite is like the prime example. You know, Fortnite is a cartoonish game, right? The, the graphics are very sort of simple and cartoonish. It doesn't take a lot of power to run uh, the game on, let's say, Xbox, PlayStation, or PC. But unfortunately on the Switch, it, it fails to maintain a constant lock 30 frames per second with such a low resolution even. You know, a lot of the times I remember like two years ago I was playing the game and it, I felt like the game was beating me because when, you know, there's crazy building, a lot of action happening in the scene, a lot of players around, it frequently dropped down to like 20 frames per second. And I'm like, dang, it's so sluggish. And then I die and I feel like, man, it's like, like I said, I, I feel like sometimes, you know, I'm not that skilled, but also sometimes I feel like the game beats you because the game lowers the frame rate and the, you know, your control is all messed up. You know, the feeling is very sluggish. And I feel like the game beats you like that. It's like, aha, we wanna, we wanna lower the frame rate and then kill you and then you're done. So, you know, Fortnite is the prime example. There's a lot of other games, you know, think of like third party games, right? That are, you know, ported over from other consoles. A lot of the times, like the developers have to make the resolution very small, very tiny, and it still drops frames and so on and so forth. So again, I feel like there's a lot of games that are struggling and that necessitates a need to get a pro version out there. You know, we don't want to get left behind either, right? I, it feels like the gap is widening and widening and widening. You know, the Nintendo Switch was built on, I think, NVIDIA Tegra hardware from 2015. So we're five years removed from that. And nowadays we have phones, you know, now even that are much more powerful than Switch. Xbox and PlayStation are coming out with their next generation consoles, right? Uh, this, this holiday season. And that gap between the power of the Switch and these next generation consoles and phones is extremely wide. I feel like we need to close the gap because if we can at least close the gap even a decent amount, 
you know, that'll still give incentive for developers to try to, you know, port cross-platform games over to the Nintendo Switch. I just want to give like a clap, like a golf clap or a gentleman's clap or something. Uh, because, you know, the Nintendo Switch has done one of the best jobs ever of third-party support. I've actually tried so many new games just because now they're on Switch from like Bethesda, um, from other developers, you know, EA kind of is like bringing soccer back and so on and so forth. I know there's there's way better examples of, of like third-party support. I can't just think of it right now, but... Uh, I have to go to my Switch library to see all the different games that I'm playing. But again, you know, I love the third party support currently on the Nintendo Switch. I don't want that gap to be so wide where developers, again, are kind of hesitant, like, should we bring it on Switch? I don't know. So we definitely need to close the gap in some sense. Okay. Um, there's also a precedent. That's like my next point. There's also a precedent of other companies, you know, primarily Xbox and PlayStation, that already have like uh, a split, like you have the more powerful console and then maybe the weaker console uh, for more casual people. They, that's already, there's already a precedent set by Xbox and PlayStation in the current gen, obviously with Xbox One X uh, and Xbox uh, One S, and then of course PlayStation Pro and regular PlayStation. And they're continuing that trend uh, with the next generation consoles. You have Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S, which is the weaker one, PlayStation, you know, they, they only have that one variant, right? It's, you know, they have the discless one, but still it's kind of the same super powered. You have the main PlayStation, but who knows in the future, you know, they probably will come out with a PlayStation Slim or something where it's a less powerful, but more affordable version of the, of the PlayStation. So again, there's already precedent with Xbox and PlayStation. I, and for this generation and next generation, I don't see why not Nintendo can do the same thing by making a Switch and a Switch Pro. I mean, there's no reason, you know, they, and they keep saying like they want the Switch to last for like 10 years or something. They want this to last multi-generation or something like that. They want it to last a way more long time than what the Wii U lasted as an example. So a way to do that, right, is obviously making the pro console, making the pro version of it. So you retain the same console, games play this, you know, you can play the same games in either console. It's just that one of them is a little bit better because it's more powerful and you can, you know, run games at a higher resolution, higher frame rate. So again, it's just a no brainer. I'm just trying to figure and I'm, they're probably going to do it, but I'm just trying to figure out like when they're actually going to pull the trigger because I don't know, the, the console came out like four years ago. Maybe they can last one or, one or two more years with the regular console. I don't want to see it that way, but maybe they can. And then instead of like that time where it's like, okay, the current uh, generation is kind of ending, maybe during that time they can introduce the pro version. Hey, you know, Switch is not over. We're not doing Wii U or Wii 2. We're, we're not doing Switch 2. We're doing Switch Pro and it's much more powerful. It's using 2025 hardware or 2022 hardware or something like that. And we can all enjoy the, the console that way. So I just wanted to get that out of my chest. Um, I'm dying for a new console for sure, a more powerful console. And I'm trying to build my Nintendo Switch as like the library that I care about the most. Like I, I have like a one terabyte or something card in there, right? SD card. I want to build the Nintendo Switch as like my be all end all game library archive sort of thing where I have all retro games on there. Every single game that I ever want to play, it's all in one console. I don't have to set up any wires. I could just pull it out and have some fun. And I think Switch Pro would make that more enjoyable because I could play some of the third party and more demanding games at a better frame rate and just make that my be all end all console. So that's the commentary. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.